Hi, welcome to another edition of the Alan Rosenberg Show. You know, for the four years I'm doing my channel, probably 95, 98% of the videos that I do are concepts that I come up with. And I literally come up on that day and I run down to my basement, show you the physical media, and I do the videos right away with no script. That's the way my channel operates. But this week I saw two videos on other channels I watched. One was the Canadian Stud Muffin a channel I really enjoy, been watching him for a while. And then there's another channel I just recently discovered called The Prog Corner. The guy's a real character. I uh, enjoyed it. And they both did videos on top popular bands that they hate. And, you know, it's all in good fun. And I was like, you know, that's a really good topic. I like that. And uh, that's what this video is going to be. So these are going to be top 10 popular bands that I hate. Now, hate is kind of a strong word, but you're going to get the feel for it when I go through my video. Now, again, this is all in fun. Music is all personal taste, and even the ones that I hate, I don't completely hate. You'll, you'll get the drift as I go through it. So don't be upset. It's all good fun. If my number 10 is your all-time favorite artist, don't hate me. I, I probably have all their albums and still like portions of it, but there's a reason why they annoy me. So that's what this video is about. Let's have some fun. Don't take it too seriously. And these are the top 10 popular bands, artists that I hate. Now, I live on Long Island. If you know Long Island, that is Billy Joel land. Um, Billy Joel is a god here on Long Island. And I know Billy Joel's music since uh, really 1976, I guess, uh, whenever Patty Piano Man came out. Um, and uh, playing at the Nassau Coliseum pretty early in his career. Um, so over time, I have every single Billy Joel album. That's right. I really do. Here's every Billy Joel album on CD, and I know them really, really well. These are all his studio records, and there's that Russian concert uh, as well. So I do have every one of his albums. I have listened to them. To death uh, over the decades. Um, and then uh, here's The Stranger, which is a, a deluxe edition of that. Let's stick that over there as well, right? We can do that. There's Billy uh, with a ton of records. And I have other Billy Joel albums too. I got box set. So I got laser discs of them. The problem with Billy Joel, we're living on Long Island, and I don't listen to commercial radio a lot because my cars are old and I listen to CDs. But. The times that I take short trips, if you put Long Island Radio on, two to one odds, Billy Joel is going to be on. And they play the same eight or so Billy Joel songs over and over again, where it's to the point where if I'm in my car driving and a Billy Joel song comes on, I literally want to take the steering wheel, floor it, and drive into the bridge embankment and kill myself. I mean, I cannot handle hearing another one of these Billy Joel songs ever again. And now it's to the point where I have every Billy Joel album and I never would want to listen to him. You know, I, I actually think most of his albums are pretty spotty. There's some really good deep tracks that are not played out, but uh, I just can't listen to the guy. So, uh, and I actually saw him in Madison Square Garden last year. It took my wife. It cost me like a bazillion dollars to see him and it was really fun. But it's the same old Billy Joel show, show. I don't know. He's bigger than he's ever been. And he hasn't released new material in 30 years, which is what his fans want. I, I don't understand it, to be honest with you. It's so played out. But anyway, number 10 popular artist that I hate, Billy Joel, even though I have every one of his albums. Number 9. So uh, that's going to go to Bon Jovi. So here's the thing with Bon Jovi. I actually just watched the five-hour documentary that's on Hulu or Vudu or one of those streaming services, and I really, really enjoyed it. I actually uh, take my hat off to him. I think what he did was incredible, you know, it came up in that hair, hair metal era, and most of those bands all kind of died away, and he cut his hair and... You know, really single-handedly, because he took over the management, and it's his name, and it's his band, um, it's him, you know, turned Bon Jovi into one of the biggest bands worldwide, not just in the United States, and still going strong. Uh, it was a great documentary, and, um, you know, he's got a lot of great songs. Uh, and he's a, you know, philanth philanthropist, right? He's got his own rec uh, restaurants for the homeless. He, you know, he's a billionaire, but seems like a genuinely good guy. 
The problem that I have with Bon Jovi is, you know, he's so formula. His, his music is like a formula. And he's got the professional songwriters, Desmond Child, whoever that helps, you know, write those songs so they have those anthemic choruses that you can't get out of your head, raise the roof on the stadium kind of things, and they're one after the other. Um, it's not that they're bad. Kind of Billy Joel like, you know, I just never need to hear You Give Love a Bad Name and Live It on a Prayer ever again. And, um, you know, so I have two Billy uh, Bon Jovi albums, Slippery Air When Wet, which I'll never need to listen to. But great songs, you know, especially in the time, Never Say Goodbye, Wanted Dead or Alive. That's a song I could still uh, really get off on. Um, and then, you know, I have... Uh, this is all you need, greatest hits, and this is the single CD edition. And again, I just never, you know, look at them. They're all f the same formula. It's my life, have a nice day, bad medicine, I'll be there for you. Um, you know, they just lay your hands on me. Runaway, his first track, that's a really good one. I remember hearing that on local radio before he was popular. You know, he's just so, f that Bon Jovi formula, and it just wears me down sometimes. But... There you have it, Bon Jovi, number nine, although I do really, really respect the guy, uh, you know, what he's done is pretty incredible and not easy to do, so there you go, number nine, Bon Jovi, number ten, Billy Joe, let's keep going, what's number eight, well, this is a band, I'm a huge progressive rock fan, and my friends back in high school in the 80s just thought these guys were the greatest, and they were getting tons of radio play, and we're talking about Rush. Now, over the decades, I have bought most of the classic Rush albums, and I've played them over and over again, and then I just trade them in. I'm like, the songs that are really popular are always on the radio. I just never need to hear them again. And, uh, you know, there's something about Getty Lee's voice that really can irk me, you know, just gets on my nerves. So all I have from Rush now, I got rid of their albums, is Rush Gold, and I never play it. And they, they, you know, they've changed their sound more electronic as they got along, which is fine. I appreciate their incredible musicianship. I appreciate what they do. It always bothered me that they got into the Hall of Fame way before Yes, because I think Yes is on a whole nother level, the classic Yes. I don't even think Rush is even in their league, and they got in way before Yes. I just don't understand. Rush is just so huge. Uh, and like a band like Yes is... Not even at their level. But there you go. Just my opinion at number eight, Rush. At number seven, we are talking Journey. I got two Journey albums. I got The Greatest Hits, and then I got this three CD, The Essential Journey. Uh, I think, uh, what is that? Don't Stop Believing I Heard is the biggest song of all time, most streamed songs. Uh, yeah, that's a song that if that comes on, I just got to leave a room. Uh, it just it's not wasn't a terrible song, wasn't a bad song, but now I can't stand it. But why would that be the biggest song of all time? I I, I don't know. Uh, you know, Steve Perry's another one whose voice always kind of annoyed me. Uh, I know they came from Santana originally. They're great musicians. They do have some really good songs. But man, if I'm on the car and Journey's coming on, you could bet I'm turning that station and. I never listen to them. So there is Journey at number seven. Number six, well, I did a huge series on them. And we are talking about Queen. And I did a really cool thing, in my opinion, because uh, I was fed up with everybody saying Queen's the greatest band of all time. And I went out and I bought all of their classic albums. Uh, News of the World, Jazz, The Debut, Night at the Opera, Day at the Races, and Sheer Heart Attack. I'm missing Queen 2. I know that. I always had this one, The Greatest Hits, number one and two. And my theory was Queen is the greatest band of all time because all the people who vote, who love Queen, know the eight or nine classic Queen songs that are always played on the radio and seen in the movies and seen on TV. And those songs are so huge and the biggest streaming songs of all time that therefore, to them, they're the greatest band of all time. Well, when I played all of these albums, and I played all of these albums a minimum of six times, some of them upwards of eight times, by the end of that month, I thought I was going to go insane, and my theory hasn't changed. They just aren't all that good to me. 
you know, um, borderline obnoxious, borderline showbiz, tap dancing. Listen, I appreciate their musicianship. They're amazing in the studio. Freddie Mercury is an incredible singer. Brian May is an incredible guitarist. They're great musicians. They are alchemists in the studio, but there's no passion, no, to me, it's fabricated queen, and I could only take them in the littlest doses, and there's pretty much only one queen song that will come on the radio that I won't turn the channel for, and that's Under Pressure, and that's because David Bowie's on it. So there is Queen. If you check out my series of videos on Queen, I should win an Academy Award for putting myself through hell listening to all of these. And I know there's a couple of people out there who've written me since and said, you, you can't judge Queen until you get Queen 2. And I'm going to get Queen 2, and I'm going to listen to it at least six times. I'm still recovering from that thing. Queen, number six. Now the rest of them... I don't have any albums from because I don't like them so much that I, I don't have any albums, but I've tried. At number five is Coldplay. I have bought two, three Coldplay albums. I didn't keep them. And uh, my feeling was, and I've heard other people say it, to me they're kind of like a poor man's U2, and I'm a huge fan of U2. Uh, are they awful? No. Do they do anything for me? Not the stuff that I've heard. How they're one of the biggest bands in the world, selling out stadiums, I just don't really get it. Coldplay, they don't do anything for me. At number four, this is dedicated to my boss. He is a huge fan of Toto. Listen, I remember when Hold the Line came out, I actually really liked that song. Uh, Susanna, is that the name of it? Rosanna. Rosanna, amazing song. I know the guys from Toto are amongst the greatest musicians of all time. The greatest guitarists, drummers, amazing studio musicians. They play on other people's material. I know all of that. Um, at the end of the day, I have bought two Toto albums. And in fact, this year, I bought a Best of Toto album. I played it twice and I dumped it. Uh, it's not that it's terrible. It's just, to me, mostly AOR schlock that does nothing. I don't feel any passion. So for me, number four, Toto. Number three is the Foo Fighters. I actually saw the Foo Fighters in 1994 open up for the Stones. There was people at that stadium saying, oh, they were phenomenal. I was like, Am I, I don't get it at all. To me, they were just a bunch of noise. Um, the songs meant were nothing to me. I have tried since. I bought a couple of Foo Fighters albums. Uh, listen, Dave Grohl, universally loved, nicest guy in rock, seems like a really good guy. He's kind of annoying to me because he's everywhere all the time. Every award show, every documentary, he's got to be on it or producing it. Did a horror movie that was god-awful. Um, you know, and he has gone from Nirvana's drama to Foo Fighters. I mean, two amazingly huge careers. But I got to tell you something. I just don't get the Foo Fighters musically. I mean, got a couple of really good songs, but... They are a stadium-level band, and I just, you know, Dave Grohl pounding away on that rhythm guitar. You know, to me, he's a drummer playing the guitar. I don't know. They don't do anything for me. And just like every other big band, Taylor Hawkins unfortunately passed away. they just going to continue because uh, it is Dave Grohl's baby, that's for sure. So, number three, Foo Fighters. Number two, the less said than better, uh, Motley Crue. I can't stand Motley Crue. Couldn't stand them then. Can't stand them now. Uh, you know, to me, they like Kiss on steroids. At least Kiss has got some great albums and some great songs. You know, what, they did a cover of Smoking in the Boys' Room. was always on the radio. I'm like, why is that version on the radio, but not the original? I don't understand. They, they still do things like that. Uh, I've seen footage of them live. It was clear even back in the day they were playing the tapes. You know, uh, Tommy Lee doing a drum solo upside down, and I'm watching him play, and the guy is not a particularly good drummer. Um, but clearly... A lot of effects, big show, big makeup, nothing musically for me. So that's Motley Crue at number two. Number one, the Dave Matthews Band. Man, uh, no offense, I can't stand that guy's voice. I can't stand them. I like jam bands, but that guy, there is something about them. I know they're great musicians. They're a huge band here in America. Um, but, man, when Dave Matthews comes on, and thankfully I don't hear them too often on the radio, I can't stand them. All of these artists, Motley Crue too. I've bought albums, tried them, dumped them. Uh, Matt, Dave Matthews Band too. In fact, one more thing to say about Dave Matthews. One of my favorite Rolling Stone songs is Memory Motel. 
Uh, it's a not to get onto the Stones, but the Stones should play at every concert. It would be a highlight of every show. Keith and Mick sing together. Amazing extended ballad. It's incredible. They finally released Memory Mopol Motel on a live album. No security. A pretty good live record. And it's on there. And I couldn't wait to hear it. And what they do, Dave Matthews was a special guest at that show. They put his version, him singing Memory Motel with the Stones on No Security. Completely ruined the goddamn song. So there's my tribute to Dave Matthews uh, in No Security. Anyway, there you have it, folks. Ten popular bands that I hate, all in good fun. There's my list. Number ten, Billy Joel. Number nine, Bon Jovi. Number eight, Rush. Number seven, Journey. Number six, Queen. Number five, Coldplay. Number four, Toto. Number three, Foo Fighters. Number two, Motley Crue. And number one, Dave Matthews Band. And there you have it, folks. Got my White Castle hat on today. I am a White Castle guy. So uh, there you go. Uh, let me know what you think. Would love your comments. I know some of these are probably your favorite artists of all time. So it's all in good fun. Uh, have a great night. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Have a great weekend. Today is Friday night. And I will see you next time on the Alan Rosenberg Show.